Okay, this is uh, section chapter 10 on algebra grade 8. This is a reach back to grade 7 math. Uh, we already said there was a mistake here, so I'm going to erase this one. What did I say to make this one? 6? Okay, 6. So these are two questions that you might have had in grade 7. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to solve this by both modeling and numeric representation. So if I first model it, this says 6, those are positive 6, is equal to 4. Those are positives plus 2x. Those are positives as well. So that's what the equation says. And I don't want to rearrange the terms. I'm going to keep everything where they are. The first thing I need to identify is the constant. And the constant is on the same side as the variable. And it's the plus minus value that does not uh, is not a part of the actual uh, variable to term. So our 4 is our constant. And if I want to get rid of 4, I'm going to apply a negative 4 to both sides. Those are open circles for negative. Those are open circles for negative. That's the reason why I put negative 4. That makes 0. I'm left with simply 2x. I better shade them in now. Cause... And then over here, I had 6. My four negatives left me with just two positives left. So when I apply negative 4 to both sides, I get that. And if two x's have the weight of 2, then each of those x's must have a weight of 1. And therefore x is equal to 1. If I take that same equation and instead of solving it with pictures, solve it numerically, the first thing I want to get rid of is my constant in a two-step equation. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Creates a zero pair, leaving me with 2x equals 2 because the sum of 6 and negative 4 is 2. Oh, that's not right. 2x equals 2. And now if I think about here, when I had my 2x equals 2, I divided the equal into two scales. So I'm going to divide both of these by 2. And I'm going to end up with x is equal to 1. In the second question, we have 3 minus 2 is equal to negative 2 plus a fifth of x. So if I draw it, it's 3 is equal to negative 2 plus a fifth of x. So if that whole thing is x, a fifth of x is represented by a full x just shaded in a fifth. That's a fifth of x. First thing I want to do is get rid of my constant. So I'm going to add 2 to get rid of that 2 there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side by adding 2. I'm left with a fifth of x. That's what's left because my constant's gone is equal to 5. And once I have that, I don't really want to know what a fifth of x equals. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quintiple this side. And I'm lazy. I'm just going to infinite clone it. But you guys don't have this. That's doubling. That's tripling. That's quadrupling. That's quintupling the right-hand side. But if I multiply the right-hand side by 5, I also have to take this side. That's doubling it. I'll infinitely clone it. That's tripling it. That's quadrupling it. That's quintupling it. And if I think about what this looks like here, if I have five fifths of x, that's going to make a full x because all those fifths are going to make a full x. And I'm not going to redraw it again, but there's 25 of them. So my solution says 25 is equal to x, or x is equal to 25. Numerically, if I do that same question with numbers, I'm going to get rid of my constant first by adding 2 to both sides, which I did right here. That's going to be 5 is equal to a fifth of x. And what did I do here? I multiplied it by 5. So I'm actually going to show multiplication by 5 with a bracket 5. And x will equal 25.